All right, we are ready to roll, Mr. Warden. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. It is uh, February 11th, 2021, and this is uh, our county council, sorry, county council meeting. I want to welcome everyone. It's actually a very nice day uh, out, depending on where you're sitting. <laughs> it's nice here in Hanover. Um, roll call, please, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Borden. Uh, currently, we have all members of Gray County Council in attendance with the exception of Councillor Soever, and I will let you know when he arrives. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, Council, is there any declaration of interest from anyone? I do not see anyone. Uh, therefore, we'll proceed on. If one does arise, I would ask you to declare it uh, at that time. Um, item number four, adoption of minutes. A is uh, County Council and Committee of the Whole Minutes dated January 28th, uh, 2021, and the special committee of the whole uh, budget discussion minutes, which are dated January 29th. Uh, those are moved by Councillor Keaveney and seconded by Councillor Potter. And Madam Clerk, I'll turn things over to you for some uh, developments. Thank you. And I'll, I'll likely reach out to Anne Marie as well. Um, I will note that Councillor Soever has joined us. Um, so just for Council's information, that um, new information has been um, received by staff in the last uh, few days related to the loan for the, um, the Owen Sound Housing Company, and thus the resolution uh, to adopt the January 28th, 2021 Committee of the Whole minutes need to be amended. Tara has a new uh, resolution drafted and she can put that on the screen when we're ready. Um, but I'll just, um, I wanted to inform council of that. I did uh, speak with uh, the mover and seconder, uh, councillors Keevan and Ian Potter respectively, to let them know of that. And they were still happy to move uh, and second those uh, amended minutes. So, uh, Anne-Marie. Certainly, good morning, council. Um, just what did come to light was the security that we proposed in the resolution um, was going to provide or was going to cause Owen Sound Housing Company to incur um, costs. Uh, and that was the entire reason of us providing the short-term loan in the first place uh, was so that those costs would not be incurred. And um, also that it could cause delays. So we're changing the type of security that we're using uh, and we wanted to reflect that in the minutes that we would be now looking at a promissory note and agreement uh, versus the registering on, um, on title. Thank you. So we're gonna have those, uh, that amendment put up on the screen. Yes, Tara's just going to share her screen. Thank you. So it's the highlighted piece there. The uh, council minutes from the 28th and the budget meeting minutes from the 29th are as adopted as presented. And it's just the committee of the whole 28th um, with the third clause of that resolution being amended to strike out the last piece of that particular clause. Okay, anyone have any, well, we'll deal with the amendment first or can we deal with this as a whole? We can deal with it all at once. It's been moved as amended, so. Excellent, thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions about any of the minutes? All understood? I do see our, I'm sorry, Mr. Warden, I do see our um, Director of Legal Services has his hand up. Okay, go right ahead, sir. Good morning, everyone. Just a small point of clarification. The promissory note is not security. It's evidence of the debt, but it, it's an unsecured loan is what's being requested here. That's all. Thank you. And I'm gathering uh, that we're, we're sort of um, dealing with a time pressure here. Uh, so we're moving this way. I'm, I'm gathering in the future, we'll be uh, looking for a secured uh, mortgage arrangement. Would that be correct, sir? This is something that I think we'll be looking into in the future to establish a more consistent policy with respect to, I don't know if um, the CAO wants to add anything with respect to that. Thanks, Michael. And, and yes, I think um, over time, our uh, 
the uh, the size of the projects that we're involved in, um, the level of investment that's required on the county's part has has changed, and I think that's true of any construction project. So we will be coming forward to council in the future um, with an updated policy. We also want to work with our providers. These nonprofits are critical to getting these projects done. And so we need to, to work closely with them to make sure that um, every aspect of, of these projects is well understood. So there's some work to do here and we will undertake that work in the coming months. Yes, which I'm sure will include uh, probably some sort of a reaching out to individuals to let them know that, uh, I guess, change is afoot. And, uh, and Absolutely. And to get their input into, you know, right. how things can work for, for them as, as well as ourselves. Excellent. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Uh, I don't see any other hands. If that is the case, then I will call the question. Anyone opposed? Seeing none, that is carried. Thank you very much. We're on to item 4B, which is the Long-Term Care Redevelopment Planning Task Force minutes dated January 22nd and some resolutions uh, contained therein. Um, it is moved by Councillor Mill and seconded by Councillor Desai. And any questions with respect to those minutes? I see Councillor Millen. Oh, Councillor Mill, go right ahead. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Mr. Warden. And I note uh, in the resolution to adopt those minutes, uh, I guess it would be the second clause number two that C A S H S consulting has been retained etc yeah. um was there not some work done uh in this regard i guess it would be the last term of council uh consulting as to you know potential uses for the facility um is this a repeat or a rerun or why or can I get a little bit of clarification on that, please. I, I mean, I wasn't involved the last yeah. term, so I'm not certain what the outcome of that consulting was. I could speak. You know? Thank you. Um, so <clears throat> earlier, um, when we were considering um, some further options with regard to how we might proceed with, with uh, long-term care services and, and um, other services to seniors, we did retain um, CBRE to provide some advice to council. And that work really centered around um, what the current status of um, senior services was in the county. Um, what do people need? what's available to them, um, you know, looking at uh, the costs and, and uh, people's, the level of resources that, that people have to be able to support that. And this work is much more about the building itself. So certainly um, that some of that work will, um, will factor into this times are changing right oh, yeah. so the things that you did five years ago might not be the things that you would do today so i think we want to refresh that and the analysis that was done earlier as well as um take a good look at um the the functionality of of the building what a renovation would entail the kind of investment that would be as well as now we know that we're in a situation where we're going to add on to an existing building. And we want to be really clear about um, where there might be opportunities for efficiencies or, um, you know, sharing of amenities, that sort of thing, and where things need to be kept really separate. So this is um, a big part of what, what SHS will be able to provide to us in this, in this uh, project. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? I do not see any other hands. So with that said, I'll call the question. Anyone opposed? Seeing none, that too is carried. We will move on uh, to item 4C, which is the CAO Performance Evaluation Committee minutes dated February 4th. Uh, that has been moved by Councillor Desai and seconded by Councillor Patterson. Any discussions therein? Seeing none, I will call the question. Anyone opposed? And there is none, so that too is carried. Item 4D, the CAO Performance Evaluation Committee closed uh, meeting minutes, which are also dated February 4th. That's been moved by Councillor Patterson and seconded by Councillor Mackey. 
Any questions? We have to go into close the the work, but there are none. And if that's the case, I will call the uh, call the question. Anyone opposed? And there is none, so that too is carried. <clears throat> uh, item five is closed meeting uh, matters. There aren't any. Item six uh, is uh, reports. Um, and we have the uh, board report dated January 21st and the minutes dated December 18th. Uh, Dr. Era, I understand, is on the line. Uh, that, that um, did we have a mover for that? I believe we did. No, I have a mover for the bylaws, but I do not have a mover for, um, for this particular report. So I will call for a mover moved by Councillor Patterson, seconded by Councillor Robinson. And Dr. Era, you have the floor. Uh, good morning, uh, Ward, and good morning, Council. Thank you for having me. Uh, the highlight from uh, the uh, board report uh, was the uh, vaccination plan for Gray and Bruce, and uh, it is consistent with the uh, provincial uh, framework. Uh, uh, the uh, part of the the plan is the mass immunization hubs and uh, and the task force to execute that uh, rather large project. Uh, all these uh, components are in place and uh, uh, progressing nicely. The um, in, in general, the situation report in in Gray Bruce, which is related to the board report as well, is we we maintain full control over the pandemic locally, and uh, we currently have. Uh, as, uh, as we had at the time of the board, um, no outbreaks in long-term care, retirement homes, uh, schools, or daycare. Um, uh, if, if there is uh, uh, interest in any specific questions or if the, uh, the board or the council would like me to provide the situation uh, update on, on the uh, um, COVID and opiate, I'll be more than happy to, but uh, th that's in general the highlight from that board meeting, Mr. Gordon. So maybe we can pause there. Uh, any questions uh, for Dr. Era? Um, Councillor Carlton. Thank you, Mr. Warden, and through you to Dr. Era. I understand that as things open up next week, we are opening up in yellow zone. And I thought that when this last um, kind of shutdown took place that we were in green. So what is the rationale for being in yellow as opposed to green? Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, when uh, the lockdown went, uh, took place, uh, I, I believe we were in the yellow. Regardless, we, all, we, the, we always look with the ministry at the previous two to three weeks, the week between two and three weeks in the past, uh, where the data would decide what color we're in right now. And uh, uh, to the best of my ability to, to uh, look at the data, um, if we, when we open next week, uh, we will be qualified for either green or yellow. And uh, that is based on the same indicators in the framework, mainly the epidemiology, the hospital capacity, uh, all these measures. Uh, so so th this, this decision will, will happen uh, quite close to the announcement itself. Um, and and I, I believe we would be back in the yellow uh, if, if the prediction uh, remains the same. Um, and it's worth mentioning whether we're in the green or the yellow for businesses or for uh, different sectors in the community, the, the measures would be the same uh, in, in a way that uh, we, we left them uh, before the lockdown. Thank you, but I believe it's worthwhile making clear, Dr. Era, that uh, we don't know whether we're going to be green, yellow, or any other color until the uh, ministers actually make that announcement. Precisely. Okay, any other questions? Um, Councillor Patterson. Um, thank you, Warden, I can wait. I just have a, a little bit of an update. So I'll wait till the questions are uh, finished. Okay, any other? I do see Councillor Mackey and Councillor Potter. Excellent, Councillor Mackey, please. Thanks, Warden. and. Uh... Thanks very much, uh, Doctor. I just wanted to congratulate you and your team on the uh, vaccination rollout plan. It was nice to see it on CTV News uh, last week. So uh, again, congratulations. 
Uh, the other day, uh, General Hillier uh, mentioned that uh, phase two, uh, April, May, and June, they're expecting uh, 7.6 million uh, uh, vaccines. Do you know what, the, uh, have any idea what that would translate into uh, Gray and Bruce counties? Not the exact numbers, uh, but it will be the second phase, which is essential workers. Uh, and that would, would entail vaccinating uh, first responders, uh, uh, school, uh, municipal staff, any, any person who would be considered essential in the context of uh, the emergency. Um, and and uh, I do believe we uh, have the ability to vaccinate uh, uh, that group in, in uh, way less than the three months that the province is projecting. Excellent. Councillor Potter. Thank you. And thank you, Dr. Ayer, for your report. And um, I know that you've been quite concerned about the opioid situation. And uh, I just wondered if there's any new update. And would you agree that uh, we may be dealing with this situation a lot longer than we will be with COVID at this stage? Through you, Mr. Chair, definitely. I It, it is definitely concerning. And I agree with the statement that it's, a, it's an issue that requires long-term uh, commitment uh, to, to ensure solutions are in place. Uh, we had in uh, January and so far in February 24, uh, 25 EMS calls. The emergency data is not out yet. And it's worth mentioning that in the, the uh, uh, data from 2020, uh, with the uh, complete confirmation from the coroner will not be out until April and June. Last time I presented to the council, I made an error in, in that uh, the, the numbers we have from the Ministry of Health uh, were up to September 12 deaths in 2020. And uh, we, we will provide an update when that uh, complete number comes. Uh, at, at this point, uh, we have, um, two alerts that went out uh, in the past, in, in 2021, uh, related to a cluster of uh, overdose. Um, core programs are in place and uh, remain in place. Uh, needle exchange program, naloxone program, opioid working group and coordinating. Uh, we have uh, completed outreach in multiple housing facility, uh, Victoria Village, uh, food banks and uh, medical clinics and some uh, street outreach and involvement in the uh, drug and alcohol strategy uh, leadership and the steering committee and chairing of the opioid working group. Uh, so th that's the type of response we have, and we uh, we are looking forward when the opioid uh, when the COVID uh, emergency ends to uh, tailor all our effort to that long term commitment. Thank you, Dr. Ara. And I would just say that a number of people have raised uh, this issue with me and I have uh, asked uh, staff to bring uh, something a little more fulsome back uh, to council at a future date. Uh, so I know that that's in the hands um, of Barb Feedy. She and I had some brief conversation by email this morning. I know that there was a, a meeting yesterday of the opioid uh, working group. Um, I don't know if she wants to chime in now. Uh, again, I, I'm famous for pressuring people, aren't I? <laughs> On the spot. I don't feel that you need to chime in now because I, I do know that staff are planning to bring uh, something more fulsome to council at a future date. Okay. And Councillor, I don't see any other hands, so that means I can now go to Councillor Patterson, correct? I, I do see Councillor Mackey's hand up again. Ah, I, I did. He's on my second screen, so I better flip over there once in a while. Sorry, Councillor Mackey. Uh, no problem, Warren. Uh, yes, Councillor Desai and I uh, uh, sat in on the uh, the meeting uh, yesterday for the uh, the drug and alcohol uh, working group, and uh, some of the uh, the highlights uh, from yesterday was uh, they're looking at a simple uh, possession exemption. Uh, they're, they're wanting to expand uh, the safe supply initiatives and are, are looking at, uh, you know, how to, how to do that. They're looking at uh, uh, mobile uh, harm reduction uh, initiatives. Uh, currently, the, the individuals that are dying, it's happening to people that are, are taking the drugs alone. So there's no one there uh, with naloxone to, to help them out if they run into trouble. 
So safe supply options. Uh, we did have uh, <clears throat> the peer advisory committee. There was three individuals that spoke to us yesterday and uh, really good insight into the, uh, the issues around uh, you know, opioids and drugs. And uh, I would certainly uh, you know, encourage uh, county council to invite them uh, to attend and, and speak to us. It was really interesting to uh, hear from people with uh, lived experience. Uh, they are also looking at a, a drug treatment court which would uh, kind of stay charges. Uh, there would be a wraparound team that would involve, or would involve uh, mental health and uh, you know, housing and uh, all the different resources. And then uh, you know, if the person's uh, successful and graduates, they go back in front of the judge a year later and uh, those uh, charges are uh, uh, stayed or, or resolved, I guess, dropped. Um, those were, were some of the highlights. So the uh, the, the group is certainly active and, uh, you know, they've got uh, different subcommittees and, uh, you know, I'm uh, really optimistic uh, that uh, they're moving in the right direction. So there'll be more to come. That's uh, just a quick uh, overview from uh, what I picked up the other day, Mr. Warden. Thank you, sir. And I um, was happy to read an article passed on to me by Barb Feedy this morning that showed uh, OPP officers and I have to send love to them because uh, as a result of their uh, use of naloxone, they've saved uh, 200 plus lives, which I think is hugely significant. All right, I do not see any other hands, so I believe that now I can go to Councillor Patterson. Mr. Warden, <laughs> sorry, yeah. if I may, oh. sorry, I can't raise oh, my absolutely, hand. Absolutely, sir, yeah. Uh, I, just regarding the question about the number in, uh, of people in phase two, it is on page number eight of our plan posted on our website, and I can go through uh, the numbers uh, quickly, uh, the, the total would, uh, sorry, the essential workers are around 30,000 people, uh, yeah. adults uh, <clears throat> uh, age 60 and above are about uh, uh, 50,000 people and uh, uh, at risk population, uh, 26,000 people and remaining eligible population, 11,000 uh, people. Thank you, sir. I did read that. Okay, Councillor Patterson, you're on now. Thank you, Warden Hicks. Good morning, everyone. Uh, during that meeting in December, we did uh, hold elections and I'm pleased to share that Ann Eady, the mayor of King Carden is the new vice chair and the chair, I was elected chair and I'm pleased to have that uh, honor. And we also filled the vacant uh, provincial uh, appointee position, and that is filled by Helen Claire Tingling from West Grace. So we welcome her to the board. And just of note, we set our meeting dates for 2021, and they are the fourth Friday of every month. Thank you, Warden. Thank you, Councillor Patterson. Is there anything else here? I don't uh, see any other hands. Yes, Councillor Sulever. Ah, <laughs> go ahead, Councillor Sulever. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. It's a, a question for doc, Dr. Ayer regarding his last comments. It just um, reminded me that um, most of the elderly, we, we have the oldest part of Gray County here in the town of the Blue Mountains. And so we would, we would fall in that over 60. I think our average age is like 57. So there's a huge number of people over 60 in this end of the county. And um, I haven't seen any plans yet for a... Uh, uh, a mass vaccination clinic in this end of the county. Um, so our, I just want to know if there are plans for such. Through you, Mr. Chair, the uh, three hubs, uh, as, as you know, uh, are in Hanover, uh, King Carden and uh, Own Sound. Uh, this is one system. There is a second system that usually services all Gray Bruce, which is the uh, the traditional distribution to family health teams, to pharmacies, and other healthcare providers. Uh, we would anticipate that the, the hub would take uh, pressure of the other system to provide that service. Uh, regardless, uh, part of the work with the task force for vaccine is to map out uh, spaces uh, that are available for uh, bigger clinics or mass clinics in every community in Gray and Bruce. Uh, and uh, providing those spaces that are volunteered by organizations that would provide them. Uh, 
um, providing these uh, for pharmacists and family health teams that would like to uh, scale up their operation. Uh, so that, that would provide that, uh, uh, th that uh, bigger uh, mass clinics in, in wherever they're needed. We don't expect that there's going to be a flood of vaccine that would cover all Grey Bruce within two weeks and we have to activate everything. Uh, the other alternative solution is to move parts of the hub to the communities that they need them to, to have the smaller uh, hub in different places. Uh, regardless, I do believe that we, we would be prepared for any scenario uh, that will take place at that time when uh, more vaccines are available. Thank you, sir. And I am flipping between both screens <laughs> and I do not see anyone else with their hand I up. And I believe, sorry, oh, I see Councillor Robinson now that I flip Thank back you. to the screen. <laughs> Go ahead, Councillor well, Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Well, thank you, Mr. Warden, and through you, I would certainly like to extend congratulations to Councillor Patterson for becoming a chair of the Board of Health. Well done. Excellent. Thank you for that. Okay, I think we are ready to call the question on this uh, report. Is there anyone opposed? Seeing none, that is passed. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Clerk, I want to apologize to you. You gave me a perfectly good sheet to try to keep me organized, and I did a great job of messing it up on you. So my apologies to you. <laughs> we are on item seven now. <laughs> you must have been chuckling. That, that guy, what a doughhead, right? <laughs> uh, item number uh, seven, uh, we have uh, two bylaws. Uh, they're being moved by Councillor Woodbury and seconded by Councillor Patterson. Are there any questions on either of these uh, bylaws? I do see Councillor Desai's hand. Councillor Desai, go right ahead. Councillor, uh, yeah, Councillor Desai. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Warden. I would ask that the uh, question be split into, and so that we can vote on the two bylaws separately, please. Okay. Okay, so we will need a resolution or a motion on the floor uh, to separate or to, to vote uh, on the bylaws separately. To split so them. Okay, Desai. so moved by Councillor Desai. Is there anyone who so would second that? Uh, uh, seconded by Councillor Robinson, uh, that they be separated. And now, Madam Clerk, can I deal with uh, uh, 510721? We need to vote on the separation. Oh, on my apologies. First. Okay, so all those in favor of uh, the split? Oh, sorry, anyone opposed? Anyone opposed to the split? I'll get this thing right yet. Is there anyone opposed? No one opposed that I can see, so that is carried. We are now ready to deal with them separately. So I will deal with 5107-21. Uh, um, that's with respect to the code of conduct. Uh, and so do I need a separate uh, mover, Madam Chair, or can I still uh, use Councillors Woodbury and Patterson? If Councillor Woodbury and Patterson are fine to move uh, bylaw 5107, then you can certainly use them. I see Councillor right. Woodbury. I see both of them. Yes. Nodding their heads. Okay, so we'll go with that. And the item is now on the floor. Are there any questions? I do not see any questions. That said, I will call the question. Anyone opposed to approval of this bylaw? And again, I see no one waving their hands or nodding their heads. So oh, that is carried. Thank you very much. I probably need two new movers then, don't I, Madam uh, Clerk, for 510821 with respect to the estimates. Uh, so moved by Deputy Warden uh, McQueen and uh, Councillor Carlton. Any questions on this item? Uh, Councillor Desai. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Warden. Um, I, I've, had a, I've had a bit of a hard time uh, understanding why we've, we've moved uh, the 1% from reserves. And so I, I tried to look back at some of the data and one of the things we, we mentioned quite a bit in um, at the Committee of the Whole was that we were doing this to be fiscally responsible and, and to be fiscally aware of the pressures that our, our constituents were facing uh, during this uh, significantly uh, hard year. Um, the data suggests that in 2020, our funding requirement had gone up three and a half percent to two, uh, approximately $2.01 million um, at three and a half percent. 
In 2021, the funding requirement was 1.4 million at 2.4% increase. Uh, and this is, of course, before we do the uh, funding for the asset management and affordable housing. And it's also before we take into account the additional growth. Um, what, has, what has me particularly bothered is that we could avoid taking this 1% from the reserves if we were to postpone the $500,000 um, movement to the um, affordable housing fund and postpone that to a time where uh, we can actually afford to do that from uh, levy funded uh, monies. Um, I know I'm not going to change minds. It was very clear it was a 17-1 vote on, on Friday and I'm not going to change minds here today. And so I'm not going to take up much of your time, but I will uh, leave you with with uh, with this thought. Um, and it's some of you may have heard a the, the original quote. I've, I've modified it a bit. Um, we must use levy funding uh, today so that our children may have reserve funds to fix aging infrastructure. Our children will need to fix aging infrastructure so that their children may have a great county and each of our individual municipalities worth growing up in. Um, and which is why I don't think I can, I, well, I'm certain I cannot support uh, the bylaw today and which is why I wanted it to be split into two questions. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Warden, for the time. Thank you, Councillor Desai. Are there any other people with questions or comments on this bylaw? Seeing none, I will then call the question. Anyone opposed to approval of this bylaw? Opposed. There being just one opposed, that is carried. Okay, so we will move on then to item number eight, good news and celebrations. Is there anyone uh, with news that they want to share? I see Councillor Potter. Yes, thank you, uh, Warden. Uh, just the, this Saturday night, Craigleith Heritage Depot presents their, the next two in their real history film series. One of those is on the Craigleith fossils, which does not include me. Uh, it's about the, <laughs> the it's about the 450 million year old fossils along the uh, Georgian Bay shoreline along Craigleith and between Craigleith and Thornbury. Uh, it's one of the oldest, one of the few places on earth where you can find fossils this old uh, visible. And you can actually walk on that shoreline and see them. So there's a, there's one film about the fossils. Uh, the other is about the Niagara Escarpment. So oh, sorry about that. And uh, it uh, will be uh, uh, telling the story of the Escarpment and, and its natural history. Uh, both of them are made by a company called Mountain Goat Films, which is located right here in the Blue Mountains. Uh, and uh, they use a lot of very, uh, very new and interesting techniques in their filmmaking. They did the two earlier films on the uh, Zenith Caves and uh, the uh, Mary Ward, if you had a chance to see those. So those are being launched this week. You can go to the Craigleith Heritage Depot website uh, at, uh, through the Blue Mountains Public Library and uh, see the, uh, the schedule for it and sign up. Uh, it's a, it should be about an hour presentation. So uh, it's very worthwhile and very interesting for people to learn a little more about Gray County history and, and the deep and rich history that we have here. Thank you very much, Councillor Potter. And I would agree with you. I think the Niagara Escarpment does have <clears throat> quite a story to tell. It's fascinating. Um, any other people? I only saw Councillor Desai. I see your hand. Thank you, uh, Mr. Warden. Uh, Rotaract Highlanders, uh, it's a group of young people in, in uh, we're based in Markdale or Grey Highlands, but we're, we're, we've are we got members uh, in other parts of the county as well. Uh, we will be making a donation of $250 to the Safe and Sound uh, organization in Owen Sound. Um, we're also, if you remember last year, we, we did the fundraising for the hospice and, and ended up raising over $23,000 over at the course of 19 days. Um, we're also uh, now looking at uh, how we can do that again uh, this year. And so if anyone has any ideas for, uh, for what we can do as a fundraiser, feel free to reach out. Uh, and if there's any uh, young people watching this uh, enthralling uh, meeting, uh, feel free to reach out uh, if you'd like to join us. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Warden. You're very welcome. 
Anyone else? I do not see anyone else. I want to thank you for that. Um, and we'll move next to item nine, adjournment. And that's been moved by Councillor Potter and seconded by Councillor Burley. Anyone opposed? Seeing none, that too is carried. Thank you very much. We will take a second to 